Hi everyone, welcome to John and Tris Chats. How are you getting like through that arch? Yeah. It's like a mountain, it's like yeah. Ben Nevis. Alright. We're going to talk about how you can intervene um, and try and get access to the phaser gate that you don't. I always like to start with the things that are are helpful, so but I think we can't have this conversation without talking about um, kind of footwear interventions. Mm-hmm. And I think there are some criteria that I think are sensible when trying to inter- intervene kind of externally um, using footwear and orthoses and stuff like that. But I think this side of the conversation is a bit more negative and what not to do. So I think, first of all, we could say a strict, no, rigid insoles. So commonly if you go to a running shop and they go, well, you've got a high arch, we're gonna put you in a rigid insole. So they're trying to chuck you into a supinated, externally rotated position. I think there's a few reasons this isn't helpful. First of all, thinking about the whole body approach of external rotation. If you just physically put the foot in external rotation, it doesn't necessarily train the rest of your limb to go into that whole body external rotation. Mm -hmm. And you're definitely not, your kind of neuromuscular system is not gonna learn how to move in an externally rotated position. Mm -hmm. It is literally just being, foot is being forced into a position and then the rest of the body might not necessarily follow and you're just adding fuel on the fire. And then I also think, that if you are stuck in internal rotation and giving you a rigid arch, as you come and your weight comes into the midfoot, if it's so rigid that it's got no give in it, you're then closing off any internal rotation through the foot, which we, we know we want both, and we want access to both. So you're chucking it into external rotation, you're completely blocking any internal rotation. Based on what we said earlier as well, I don't think many running shops will understand the difference between true pronation and maybe the sort of false pronation that we were mentioning earlier in the calcaneus yeah. and the navicular dump again. So what I do advocate is I don't, I'm not completely against um, having a bit of an arch in your insole, but it, for reference, so your midfoot can have that feel and feel the ground, bringing the ground up, but it just can't be rigid. So as your weight comes into the midfoot, it has to have give so your arch can come down. Mm-hmm. And then also thinking about toe box. The toe box, so the bit across kind of the, the, the midfoot and the width, has got to be wide enough that when we internally rotate and we pronate, that the transverse arch, the, not the arch on the inside of the foot, when you think about it, the arch that goes across the top of the midfoot can lengthen and the big toe and the little toe can separate and move further apart. Mm-hmm. If you have a really narrow toe box, then you're not going to get any length through your midfoot, you're not going to be able to truly pronate. So I think um, adequate kind of width of toe box to allow pronation, no to rigid arches, but okay to having an insole that has a bit of an arch as long as it's got some give to pronate down into. Um, And then I think the other thing that's sensible to consider is a a heel rocker, so the bit that kind of couples your... um, Couples? Couples. (laughs) Cuddles. Couples. 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 Um, hugs, hugs, um, your Support. heel supports, yeah. So thinking about yeah that heel rocker to give your calcaneus some some kind of support and reference, particularly important with those people with the the foot out, everything dumping in, just gives that heel bone a little bit of a reference and stops this abandoning man overboard ship and everything kind of moving in the frontal plane. Yeah. What we're probably not going to address is. Barefoot shoes and styles of running. Styles of running, there. I feel like that's a. We said that's probably a video in itself, didn't we? I think so. One thing I will quickly say about barefoot shoes is I feel they're like um, being drunk, is in that it accentuates what's there already. Do you think being drunk's like that? Yeah, I do. Do you really? Do you think that's your personality accentuated? I think so. All oh, right, it's interesting. Maybe, maybe a poor analogy, but I think if you're if you have really good access to external and internal ro- rotation positions, I think barefoot shoes are lovely. Um, 
lovely, lovely adds good load through the body. But if you're really struggling to get one position or another, yeah. probably not the most sensible idea to load your foot up more. Mm-hmm. Um, whilst the mechanics aren't ideal in kind of force absorption and production. Mm-hmm. How do you know if you're someone like me who has a relatively good arch, yeah. but probably doesn't pronate very well? How would you know if you don't pronate very well, but you have a relatively good, in standing, you have quite good foot posture, but actually, in reality... Well, I think it's very hard. I, th- I think it's hard. You, you probably can't say you have good foot posture in standing because... Well, I do, mate. So yeah. <laughs> but well, what we're saying is foot posture needs to be dynamic. You need to create these different shapes with your foot, and therefore getting a snapshot at one particular time is not going to tell you if you can pronate. So you're really only going to know if you see someone running? Yeah, see someone running, slow it down. Like I say, um, the tread on the footwear can be very helpful. Um, it might, if you have got in standing like arches for days already, your mind's probably going to start thinking like, how are you getting length through that arch? Because yeah. it's like a mountain, it's like yeah. Ben Nevis. All right. Yeah.